If you want to troll for offshore pelagics or bottom fish the reefs comfortably on days when seas are forecasted to be 3 to 4 feet, maybe cross to the islands or head out to the middle grounds, a center console in the 28 to 32 foot range will get the job done. Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, we're showcasing boats that are built for hardcore tournament fishing and comfortable family adventures on the high seas. These are center consoles in the 28 to 32 foot range with the added features and length to extend your fishing range. Some key features to look for in this class are large insulated fish boxes to keep your catch fresh, especially on multiple day trips. Dual and even triple live wells can allow you to transport different species of live bait or ensure you don't run out during a tournament. A cushioned leaning post that has built-in tackle storage keeps all of your gear ready for action. When the family is aboard, having a head in the center console is a nice feature. Another family feature is aft stern seating, which tends to be the most comfortable place to sit while underway. Forward seating is also desirable when entertaining takes priority over fishing. A sharp, deep V entry smooths out the waves and lets you leave the security of the marina with confidence. If you're looking for a hole with a greater length to span a longer wave set, plus a wider beam to offer more stability and rest, then you may want to consider a center console in the 28 to 32 foot range. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as we feature three center consoles that let an angler step up in size from a smaller hole but still need only twin power. Contender 28 Sport the Century 2901 and the Southport 29FE. They'll be conducting walkthroughs, test drives, and reviewing key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to this episode of Best Boat. I'm Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sports and Magazine. And I'm Rick Riles, program director of Florida Sports and Radio. The three boats that we brought today, they're the big center consoles. We start off with a contender, she's 28 feet, then we go up to the Southport, a little bit longer, 28.6. We top it off at the Century, which is 29. Dave, they're gorgeous boats. I had to tell you what, you, you remember the first big center consoles? Look at the changes we've seen. Oh my God, yeah. The manufacturers have really listened to customer demand. It used to be that the big center consoles were hardcore fishing machines, and that's pretty much all you did. Now, they brought a lot of family element into it. You've heard us say this a lot if you've watched the show. A lot of manufacturers now are including mom and the kids. These big center consoles have done the same thing. Dave, it's a process called evolution. The boats have changed as they've developed. They really have, and I mean, it used to be, like I said earlier, you take one of these big boats out, and it was for a day of tournament fishing. That's going into your world. You're real familiar with that. But now people want to bring the family, they want to bring the neighbors. So they've had to add a lot of, lot of features to make these boats comfortable. And let me tell you something, riding in one of these boats now, that's far different from standing behind a center console leaning against a little post. They're almost transformers. You can change them into a hardcore tournament fishing boat at the snap of a finger. You really can. And what they've done, they've all included forward seating, they've all included rear seating, and we've seen this time and time again with the boats we've been testing this year. But these boats took it up a notch where they're really comfortable behind the helm. Dave, the seats go in on Saturday, they come out on tournament day. It just makes the boat more versatile. It really does. And this is a boat that if you wanted to fish SKA, they'd be right at home. If you wanted to take the family to the sandbar, they'd be great for that too. Or if you wanted to cross a Gulf Stream, go over to Bimini or West End and spend a week over there, I want to be in one of these. Offshore used to mean just over the horizon. I remember the first time I ever tried to run 10 miles offshore, I got scared, turned around and went back because I was afraid I couldn't find the buoy. Now offshore can mean 100 miles. It can mean more than one day. These boats can handle it. They really can. Well, for somebody that has only seen the big tournament rigs that you, know, you stand up to drive, there's no, really no place to sit. Let's show them what these boats are all about. They can see just how much comfort these boats have incorporated. They're going to be able to determine which boat is the best boat for them. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This segment is brought to you by Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week, we'll be featuring 28 to 32 foot center consoles. Dave and Rick started off with the Contender 28 Sport. Okay, Rick, this is the smallest boat of the three that we brought today. 
It's the Contender 28 Sport, but it is no way short on features. Dave, what you mean is it's the shortest of the three we brought today. From day one, Contender has built a big boat for their size. They were one of the first two manufacturers of center consoles over 30 feet. And let me tell you something, you can fish more people out of a Contender than any other big boat from the day they hit the market. Well, you really could. And it used to be in the past that when you'd go to Les and say, hey, I want a boat for the family and stuff, they said, look, we build fishing boats. You want to win a tournament, you buy our boat. Finally, they listened to consumer demand and they put in some refinements and now the wife can look at this boat and say, okay, honey, yeah, you can buy the boat. I'll go with you, okay? And a lot of times if she won't go with you, you ain't going, okay? So that we needed to address that market and the industry's really done it. Contender's done it very, very well. Let's start looking at some of the things we, we like about this boat. First off, out of the hole, she's a rocket. She runs great, high speed. It'll get you there in a hurry. But let's look at what makes it comfortable while you get there. Okay, Rick. All of these boats that we brought today have bow seating, but what I love about the Contender, they've kept it simplistic. It's everything you need, but it's not over the top. It's a comfortable place to sit, but it doesn't take up all your room up here. Any king fisherman will tell you, you want to fight the fish from up here. How easy is it to snatch the seat cushions, prop your knees against there, and go to war? It really is. What they've done is they've added the bow seating, but really they haven't hampered this boat's ability to get out there and win a tournament. You're right. Big fish box up front. PFDs on each side, rod lockers all the way up here. Well, they've maximized their room pretty doggone well in this one. They have, but got a nice cooler under the front seat of the console. So let's say you do want to use this as a sandbar machine. All your drinks and your food are right there. You don't have to go to the back of the boat to get it. That's blasphemy. This ain't no sandbar machine. This is a let's run to the Gulf Stream and catch another billfish machine. I love the fishing features incorporated in this boat. Look at your rod holder, 360 degrees around where they belong. Right, the handrails too, they've done something a little different. We see a lot of handrails up here, but they put them really where you need them. If you're walking forward and it's rough, it's nice to have something to grab way back there instead of not being able to get a handrail until you get to the bow. Dave, we set it from the start on this boat. It is simple, it is functional. Look how well this console is laid out, but then Contender got smart. No salt on your screens ever. And when I look at this boat, the thing that really comes to mind is these guys have been doing it right for a long, long time. time. They know what it's like to run in bad weather. They know what it's like to go out when you have to to win a tournament. And they've just kept true to their roots, like I said earlier. Yeah, you're right, David. Let me tell you what. Contenders been around long enough where they've been tested by fire. Okay, they've seen the results of some bad conditions. They've refined, they've tweaked, they've kept it simple. But my goodness, is it a fish machine today. And you know what? They've changed the sport up to where they've added a lot of comfort. Look at this seat. This is a seat you don't normally see in a contender. But when you sit in here and you've got these sides holding you in, you can run this boat in rough water without the fear of falling out. Okay, Rick, in the cockpit back here, here again, a lot of room, plenty of fishermen can get back here and fish, but if you look at the helm, one thing I really like, they've got a frigid rigid, and it slides out on a track, so that way if I want to get to a drink, it's easy to get to, but if I don't need anything in the cooler, I'm not tripping over it. It's out of the way. <laughs> How many years do we deal with cooler lids that wouldn't open because of the rocket launcher? You know what I like about this boat? I'm an old charter boat, mate. Let me tell you something you'll appreciate being able to reach the water. Can you rinse off your hands? Yes. Can you grab a billfish? You bet you can. I'm not real big on freeboard that comes up to my waist. Dave talking about the gunnels. One thing that you may not notice right off the bat, but a fisherman will, these real big combing bolsters. Why the real big combing bolsters? Fishermen of all sizes have got to be able to walk up and down the sides of these boats with their knees against them. And let me tell you something, there is plenty of room for you right here to brace yourself while you're fighting a big fish. Tell you one thing, you can tell a guy who's been around fishing a long time. He builds a boat with the live well where it should be, in the transom. It's long, it's oblong. Your bait's on a continuous track swimming around. Your top is clear. You can see right through to them to make sure they're not struggling. Well, it's in the back of the boat. If you're live baiting, this is where you're going to be doing it from. Unless you're flying a kite out the front. Yeah, it makes total sense back here. Dave, this hull is tried and true. Everything on this boat's been battle tested. It is ready to go to sea. Well, the first thing that I saw this morning when we were running offshore, she is fast. This boat took off and it left the pack and we had to catch her once we got to the inlet. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe that's a young driver too, but it's a rocket. They're right. They're not kidding when they tell us that. But you know something else I like? You know how many phone numbers you need to get your contender work done? One. They build the T-top. They build the windshield. They do the Isinglass. This boat comes from the factory. They've put it all together. They can tell you in a heartbeat if you have a problem where it came from. Stay tuned for this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. 
Florida Sportsman, the source for fishing in the outdoors since 1969. Florida's largest fishing and outdoors magazine, year-round TV with real-time Florida Sportsman, and Florida Sportsman Best Boat, Florida's number one online resource. Over 8 million page views a month. Live reports from the water every Saturday morning. Hands-on instruction, seminars, and demonstrations. Books, charts, and more. Become part of the Florida Sportsman community today. Welcome back. Here's Dave and Rick with this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. Dave, you know there's a lot more to navigating an inlet safely than red right returning. Oh, there really is. And even when you operate a boat in general, you really need to keep your head on a swivel and get the big picture of everything around you. One of the things that worries me most about boaters too, Dave, when I see full boats, by that I mean here's a 17 center console with six or seven people on it. Each one of those people standing there represents a dead zone to the captain, okay? You know where you never want to have somebody in a busy inlet? Standing in front of the console. You can't see what's coming at you with somebody blocking your view. Especially if it's rough. Stop for a second. Watch the waves. See what's happening. If another boat goes past you, see how he makes it through the inlet. And then time yourself to go through that inlet on the back of the wave instead of just barreling through the inlet full speed. Dave, safe boating is all about being aware. That's what Florida FWC's campaign is this year. When you're boating, be aware. Okay, Rick, this is the Southport 29FE. I ran this boat earlier, and let me tell you, it is amazing. It's the middle-sized boat that we brought of the three, but it's got some big boat features. Well, it's, you described it very well earlier. You called it yacht-like, and, and it is. It's certainly not built to be the fastest boat on the ocean. Right. Okay? But it's built wide. It's built tall. It is a beefy, beefy boat. Well, it really is, and if you look at it from a distance, you see a big Carolina flare in the bow, tumble home in the rear. This boat looks like a small yacht haul. It's 28 feet, 10 inches long. It's almost 29 feet, but it's 10 feet, 6 inches wide. That gives you a lot more planing surface. A, it may slow you down a little bit. B, woo, can it make you feel better if you're sitting drifting on a choppy ocean? Well, Rick, right before we go look at the interior of the boat, let's look at this walk-around gunnel because a boat this size can have a huge gunnel and a huge deck, and it does. It does indeed, and it's not wasting space like, like somebody who's not familiar with it might think. What a great place to cast at Cobia, like we did on a recent show, to set your lines. It's just a, it's a great area up here to stand on, very, very stable. All right, Rick, let's start off in the bow of the south port. The cushions are removable. And so you end up with a great big casting deck up here if you wanted to fish from up here or if you wanted to throw a cast net, you could. But you get to the sandbar, you've got the family. Table comes up, now you've got a great picnic place. Now you're going wine and cheese on me again, aren't you? I'll well, never get you over that. But you know what? If you've got a guy out there and he really wants to do hardcore tournament stuff, they make the same boat in a TE model. All this is gone and there is a big traditional coffin box up here for your SKA guys. Dave, you started it. You were the first one to call this boat yacht-like. Oh, do I love this console. Makes me feel like I'm on the bridge of a big sport fisherman. Well, it really does. You know, we talked earlier about it's got a full windshield that goes all the way to the top with a windshield wiper and a windshield washer. So when you get that little bit of salt spray on there, it'll knock it right off. Uh, the wind couldn't take my hat off of that windshield up there, I'm telling you. And it's amazing how much space you've got up here. Two 15-inch display units can stay up here with no problem. And really they've done a great job in putting this boat together in the rigging department too because we've got the joystick that we're starting to see on a lot of these larger boats. Even for an experienced captain like yourself, it makes docking so much easier. But if you take a guy that's a novice and he's got to learn how to run a boat, this can keep him out of trouble. But here again, let's talk about the family. If you look inside this console, this is one of the nicest interiors I've seen yet. It's got a real head in there, a lot of storage a granite looking uh, countertop with a built-in sink, very, very comfortable. And when you step down inside the boat, full head height. Even for me? Oh, for easy for you and I. Unbelievable. <laughs> but much by, somebody even taller, no problem. Ooh, Dave, I gotta tell you, the old charter boat mate me loves this area right here. You can rig all your baits right here. You can keep them chilled on ice right there. You've got a 45 gallon live well and a sink over here. You can run fresh or raw water right out of here. Well, also, too, the bulkhead that separates the transfer from the cockpit, there's two additional wells back here that are also insulated. I guess you could keep more bait. Oh, you could. And you know me, as many fish as I catch, I go through a lot of bait. But once again, of course, you got your stern seating. More rod holders against the transom. You can never have enough rod holders on a boat. All right, Rick, let's do a quick wrap-up of the Southport 29. 
You know one of the things I like best? It's just like me, it's wide. It is very wide. It is a big boat. For only 29 feet in length, this has a yacht feel. has a yacht finish to it, too, which I've, I found nice. The big platform up front, okay, it just feels good standing up there. They've got it the right size. It, well, they do, and they've got the bow seating, and then you come to this console, which is absolutely gorgeous. A few other things we didn't even talk about. This boat, this is how you operate the boat, a key fob like your car. You hit a button, your battery switches automatically go on and off by themselves. You even have electric outriggers, so you don't have to crawl on the gunnel to mess with them. You push a button, they deploy automatically. You push another button, and they come back. Ooh, I like that. Well, as you come aft, the rigging station that you talked about, you've got tackle storage in here, your live well, everything's centrally located, so you don't have to run all around the boat to either use live bait or rigged bait. It's all right here. Lots of tackle stations. One thing we also didn't mention, dive door. We're seeing a lot of boats, but I love having a door back there. If you're pulling up to the sandbar, diving, snorkeling, it's just a nice, nice feature to have. If you're stepping down from a big sport fish boat, but you want to keep that feel, you want to keep that stable, I'm steady in the water feel, this Southport might be the best boat for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew stayed at Pirates Cove Resort and Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina. When you buy a Florida fishing license, you support research, conservation-minded fishing, law enforcement, habitat restoration, hatcheries, access to fishing, and programs that connect kids to the outdoors. It's an investment in the future. Those are the reasons I do. That's why I do. These are the reasons I do have my Florida fishing license. Please say, I do, too, and get your Florida fishing license. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week, we're featuring 28 to 32 foot center consoles. Dave, now we're on the boat I got to run offshore today. The 2901 Century, and let me tell you something, was that ever a sweet ride offshore? Ran into a little head sea, she didn't even feel it. Well, the first thing I noticed when we got on board is, it's got bow seating like we keep seeing, but they put up backrest so you face the right way, you face forward. That's right, and I tell you, I spoke with the reps of Century, he said the women love that. The family loves that concept. It's another step in the evolution of center consoles. This is a boat that you can ride very comfortably up front. It's not always your best place to sit in a boat, but on the right day, this thing's a dream to ride from up here. Well, out of the three boats we brought, this is the longest one. She's 29 feet long, but she's also a little bit more narrow than the Southport. What is nine foot six beam as opposed to what you know, was a, a 10 six? A 10 six, and that's exactly right. What does that do? That gives you less planing surface, makes you a little more fuel efficient, makes you a better ride into a head sea. You're not going to have the pound. Maybe you sacrifice a little stability beam-wise, walking back and forth like we experienced on the south port, but man, does it make a difference when you go to cross a big body of water. Right, and the look of this boat is more traditional, too. If you look at this boat, when you were running alongside of me today, this boat has an aggressive look. It looks like a tournament machine that they made for the family. It does. It goes back to the lines of the original real big center consoles, which a lot of guys, myself included, are still in love with. You know, we're getting to a point in the process now, Dave, where we're tweaking the little things to make everybody in the family happy. And I think it's exactly what Century did. They kept what worked, and they just made it a little bit better. So the Century that you've seen years ago is not the Century they're building Well, let's today. look at some of the stuff we like about this one. All right. Dave, we just came back from a Saturday afternoon with the family. Let's look at how fast we can turn it back into a full-time fishing machine. Well, I pull this button, table's out of the way. I take this backrest out, cushion's out of the way, and I am up on the bow in my favorite place, fighting a big fish. And Rick, when you step off of there, there's an insulated fish box right under your feet. So when you land that big fish, you can drop him right in. I'll slide him right in. All right, Rick, when we look at these big center consoles, we always talk about the console itself. What I like about the Sentry is the room inside the console. It goes way forward under the bow. Not that you would sleep under there, but if we're going to go to the islands for a week, it's a great place I can lock all my rods up and they're out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, you're right, Dave, and, and it gives you a bunch more storage. You know me, I can never have enough storage on a boat, enough places to put rods. That's a great place to put them, close the door, and they're not seen. When well, we're talking about locking the rods up, one thing I really like, they've got doors on either side under the gunnels where you can lock your rods up too. That way they're easy to access, but here again, out of sight, out of mind. 
Well, you're right, and it's a fine storage. Boy, am I ever in love with this seating they've got here. Once again, they didn't give you a bench. They gave you seats, okay? These are just as comfortable to ride in as, as your car or anywhere else you're going to sit. Now, above our head, we've seen a lot of molded hard tops on a lot of these big boats, especially. One thing I love is the fact that they've matched the color, but they put the dark color on the bottom. And the amount of glare it's knocked off, it's amazing. Another thing we're seeing a lot of, and Century has done it also, built-in misters. I love this. It gets hot in the summertime, flick a button, you get those misters going. This is the most comfortable place to stand in the entire boat. Dave, every boat we look at, everybody's trying harder to maximize space. Most builders waste the space below the gunnels. Century has done a great job of using every square inch below the gunnel of the boat. Well, everywhere you look, there's a locking compartment. I've got a wash down on this side. We've got an electrical switch over here. We've got tip-out tackle boxes here. We've got the rod storage we talked about earlier. It's a great use of storage space that a lot of other boats just leave open. Well, you're right. And boy, do I love that panel of battery switches and stuff. Get it out of the salt water. Get it out from your bilge. Get it out from under your console and have it to where you get to it in a moment. Well, something you're going to love, open up this tackle storage behind the leaner. For a guy that fishes tournaments like you do, this is custom made for your world. Excellent use of space under the rocket launcher. Well, your live well, right back here, check it out. You've got your rig and sink over there with a cutting board, and you've got this huge live well, but it's actually divided into two, so if you wanted to put different kind of baits on either side, you can separate them. Not only that, Dave, you can drop that panel down in there when there's only three baits left, makes them catchable. Look at the size of the fish boxes on either side, port and starboard. They're super long. A tournament winning kingfish or a big wahoo, he's gonna easily fit there. So if you're looking for a big center console that you can still trailer, you still only need two outboards, you don't have to have triples or quads, maybe the Century 2901 would be your best boat. If you're looking for a trailerable center console that can give you serious blue water capability while requiring only twin outboards, then a center console in the 28 to 32 foot range might just be the best boat for you. And if you want more information on the three boats you've seen in this episode or any of the boats that we featured during Best Boat, go to our Florida Sportsman website at floridasportsman.com, go to the boating page and click on the Best Boat link. And we'll see you next week on Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Be sure to join us next week when we cover 23 to 27 foot hybrid bay boats on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Each month, turn to Florida Sportsman for the best in boating and fishing coverage.